here it's Lizzie from Old Stables Crafts thank you for joining me again today um, today's project is this one which I would like to pick up but it will flop so I'll do it very gently um, I don't know if you can see that it's flickering um, it's a tea light holder um, it's actually very straightforward to make um, because it uses one of our dies so that's always a plan um, it's the window box thinlets dies um, and I've used this pattern and the dots um, to make this box. So let me show you what I did. Now I started, I've done the die cutting already because it takes a while. It's not complicated, but it does take a while. But I started with a piece of um, black, basic black cardstock. Um, this is a half of a 12 by 12 sheet. So I cut it at six inches. This is the scrap. So you don't actually need the whole length, but you probably do need the width. Um, so you could do it out of a piece of A4, um, but I think it's not the most effective way of doing it. I think using um, 12 by 12 is probably the, the most effective way of doing it with least waste. But you could do it with your standard card sheet um, and you could also do it with the eight and a half by 11 if you're in the US. Um, originally I did it without vellum so I've kind of backtracked and put vellum in the top um, because I actually think it's nicer that way. So what have I done? All I've done so far is the die cutting. Um, so what I did was ran it through the big shot um, what, twice for no, once for that and twice for that. So this one I used the top piece and one of the hules. Uh, you do have the options of, um, you can add in uh, candles or hearts instead of the holes or don't have the holes at all. Um, and you can put slits in the lid instead of this pattern, but I like that pattern. So that's what I've done. So I ran it through once with the holes and the lid. And then the second time, I didn't put the extra die in the um, in the lid. And all you do to put the die, the, the lid die in is you get your die and you just lay it in. Um, this is one for the precision base plate. You don't need it for the box, but you do need it for the inlays. Um, I tried it without and it's a nightmare without, so... You could probably do it with shims, but I think it is one for the precision base plate. So the second time I just ran it through um, with the holes, but I also ran a piece of vellum through just on the lid um, so that I've got the right size for the, the lid. Um, the side pieces are just one and three quarter inches square and it's three pieces of vellum. So let's pop it all together because there is a... There are a few things you need to know. So I'm going to start by taking the flaps off the piece I've cut for the lid. Um, you'll notice I didn't quite get it um, right at the corners. I say right, it's fine, um, but it's not gone, It's not a true hexagon. Um, need to trim that a bit more. Um, but it will fit if I put it on the solid one. You can see it fits fine. Um, I might actually trim a little bit more off there. So that's those bits. So all I've done for that is bring in my silicon mat. Um, and you can either apply the adhesive to the vellum or the adhesive to your lid. Either is fine. I've used fast fuse um, and just pop it where there isn't a gap and do remember with your fuse to flick it in both directions I've been too, doing too much in one direction Ooh, there's a stray bit of stray bit of cardboard there come on which of course is now sticking to the fast fuse so all I'm doing is running it round the edge and of course, because I haven't cut it fully to the edge, you'll probably find that I've put fast fuse where I don't want it now, but never mind. So then take your vellum 
and pop it onto your lid. Oh, and I got away with it. Hurrah. Now, obviously, it's going to show, but this is the inside, so it actually doesn't matter. And then just make sure that your flaps can still flap. And then from the outside, it's like that. But if I put the light underneath it, and this is just a cheap, you know, tea light, uh, battery tea light. You wouldn't want to use a real tea light because vellum paper's um, not going to like it, but vellum will like it even less. That actually is a bit too snug. So I'm just going to see if I can trim that teeny weeny weeny bit. That should be better. And again, because it's on the inside, it doesn't matter that it's not terribly straight. Um, and the die actually gives you the fold lines. It, it puts those in for you. So do those. And then again, we need some fuse to attach the vellum to the holes. Actually, let's take that away, then you can probably see better. And the trouble with vellum is it gets lost on this mat. I like my work surface a lot, but it's not great with with things you can't see. There we go. So that's that. And then on this one, again, just run round the edge, remembering to go in both directions when you break your fuse. so it doesn't fall off the roller. Um, it tends to be more prone to falling off the roller when it's a new uh, refill. Um, I don't know why. I think it seems to get tighter as you use it. Um, but yeah, just one of those things I have found. Oh, I'm taking it right off the roller now. Put it back on, there we go. So I was thinking that this, bearing in mind you tend to get these tea lights in packets of six, this would be really lovely up your staircase maybe. Um, because, as I say, they're not expensive. I got them at a local, not quite discount store, a local not expensive store. Uh, it's probably the way to describe it. Got a little bit of fuse where I don't want it, so I can just rub that off before it sticks to anything. And then just make sure that you've got that well stuck. I would be tempted to bring in a bone folder just to get that well and truly burnished down. of the bits. As you can see, hopefully you can see as you burnish it, it, it does stick better because you can see the, the glue a bit better so therefore it's adhering better. Right, so you need a top and a bottom and you put them together in a string but you do need to get rid of um, the flaps on one of your pieces. Now you don't want your flap coming over the holes so I would be tempted to take off the flap on the piece that doesn't have holes in. Um, sorry black is a nightmare to see in. Let's see if I, if I introduce that light as well whether it's easier. A wee bit. And then of course it casts a shadow. Hold it in both directions. That's better, but only just. There we go. So again, bring in your silicon mat and your fast fuse and just run that along there. And the, the fast fuse won't stick to the silicon, so you can just kind of curl it over so that it um, goes onto the cardboard. Down because that's got a little 
schmush now. And then again, roll that so that it's on the outside. And then making sure that you've got your top and your bottom on opposite sides. Which I'll do it this way up. Um, so you've got them to the right and the left, not both to the right or both to the left. Just line up there and there. And then line up there. Because it's a symmetrical box, you can. And then, remembering this is the top, you don't want adhesive on these, but you do need adhesive on these pieces. So, very carefully add your adhesive to these flaps. And I say carefully because you don't want to get it gluing to itself. Now again, because it's silicon, that won't attach there. And then flip that over. And again, flip that over. Last two pieces. You could use wet adhesive, so you could use your um, multi-purpose, but I would not be tempted to use snail because you, this is a box and it is card. So you do need to bear that in mind. So I just need to be a little bit nearer the edge than that. That's better. Right. OK, this is where the fun starts because you need to stick everything together without sticking everything together. Um, so I tend to work round and just and then if it's gone over just rub it and it will come off at this point and then these ones you do have to be a bit careful of because it's all going to want to stick together in the wrong place so Pull that one in and down and tuck that one. Oh, pull it all apart. So tuck those in. This is where you need, really need three hands for all of your own. Okay, let's just go for it and see if that works. Yay! I was trying to make it far too complicated. Right, and then get your bone folder and just make sure that you have reinforced those seams so that they are well and truly stuck. Then turn your tea light on and close your box up. And there you have your little tea light box. And if I turn that light off, yeah, you are, you see? And again, on the sides, it's not quite so easy to see on the sides because it wants to move around, but obviously you wouldn't need to do that. Let me see if I can hold it. There we are. There you are. So really pretty. And because these are the flickering tea lights, it gives that lovely glow. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Just an idea, a fairly straightforward idea, using things that are in the catalogue waiting to be used. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, it's the bottom right hand corner, that little button down there. Hop over to my blog where you'll find all the dimensions um, and the list of products. Uh, if you need anything, um, and let's face it, you're going to want this, um, then do pop over to my online store and uh, pop that in your basket. And um, remember, if you do shop with me and you use the hostess code, um, you get a free gift the following month um, just for using a hostess code and just for shopping with me. Um, and you also get to join my VIP club. So even better. So I look forward to seeing you very soon. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.